Good afternoon, I'm Vashon Brown with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says he'll be making another request for additional posts to be created for doctors to work in the public health system. Dr. Tufton, who was speaking on TVJ's All Angles last night, said going into the next financial year, the request will be made to the Finance Ministry. Now, the Gleaner reported on Sunday that after successful interviews at some facilities, several doctors are still awaiting confirmation of their contracts by the Health Ministry. The stories from doctors currently working in the health sector, voiced and portrayed by some of our team members because the doctors were afraid to speak publicly due to fear of victimization. Seven days per week. Yes, at most hospitals, doctors are working seven days per week. You are doing this day after day with no break. Ask for leave, you probably won't get it because there isn't anybody to replace you. So you are working like this non-stop. So when doctors make mistakes and patients die or suffer, it is because the system is understaffed and we are burdened and cannot say anything. We stand on our feet for hours on end, 36 and sometimes 52 hour shifts going and going. No food, no water, no time to even eat or drink even if we had food or water. Just seeing patients back to back, falling asleep trying to take a patient's history because we can't stay awake no matter how we try. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says when he assumed office, the issues raised by the doctors existed. He says the government has put a plan in place to deal with the problems. While that kind of long-term fix or medium-term fix is on the way, that it's they... Not that, it's that, not that, hold, hold on. Yeah. I understand that there is a possibility that... They, that Cabinet can approve temporary positions, mm. which the Ministry of Finance should, could, could approve. And, and so why are we not yeah. putting in place that very urgently required temporary fix? So cabinet, the, the Ministry of Finance and Cabinet has approved nearly 2,000 additional positions for nurses because their problem has been a lot more chronic than the doctors, to be totally frank. So when will new posts be created for doctors? The idea, the idea is, given that we have dealt with the nurses now, adding a number of additional posts, the idea is that going into the next financial year, where we, the, the plan is, and the next financial year meaning next year, we will make the request again, based on the strategic plan we have, to the Ministry of Finance and the Cabinet to add additional posts. And we- Permanent posts? Yes, to, 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 to create a greater number of established posts. What as happened to the to temporary fix? Why aren't you pursuing the temporary fix while you're doing that? What, what is the temp you mean to hire more doctors? Well, it's a, function of, it's a function of the resources. The doctors have argued that they've been working in difficult situations, even with a lack of resources, lack of equipment, and the lack of medication. I refuse to accept oh. that there is a lack of medication. What? I refuse what? to Minister, accept that I the will National Health with Fund. You. Hold on, that the National Health Fund, which spends seven, eight. You refuse to accept that there's a lack of medication. Totally refuse to accept. Vashon Brown. And the opposition spokesman on health, Dr. Maurice Guy, says the government must find a way to employ more doctors. Now, during his sectoral debate in Parliament this week, Dr. Guy blasted the health minister over his reaction to the news that doctors are terminated because the ministry could not accommodate them under the current financial budgets. They didn't just arrive overnight. They have been training for five years. They have been working for two years. Yes. If the minister's response is that the university was training more than they ought to, no, then plans ago. should have been made from long ago to accept that cadre of doctors into the system, Mr. Speaker. It cannot be a situation that overnight you are being aware of something and you are asked to make decisions. But guess what? The country needs them. Find a way to employ them, Mr. Speaker, and do the right thing because our country needs these doctors. 
Chairman of SCJ Holdings, Joseph Chukir, is distancing himself from the controversy which has erupted over the Holland Estate Land Agreement with Holland Producers Limited. The land deal is at the center of deepening controversy amid claims of a conflict of interest. Mr. Shakir told our news center this morning that he would not comment further on the matter as it has become controversial. The Gleaner Today reported that Mr. Shakir the Gleaner today reported Mr. Shakir as saying that the decision to give Holland producers possession of the sugar lands was based on advice from the Agriculture Ministry. Minister without portfolio in the Agriculture Ministry, J.C. Hutchinson, has stated that he recommended that the company, which was called Holland Estate Management Company at the time, be given the land. He says this was done in his capacity as Member of Parliament for St. Elizabeth Northwest. Mr. Hutchinson, who is now at the center of the controversy due to a concern about a conflict of interest, has said he verbally disclosed to Mr. Shakir the relationship between himself and a former director in Holland Producers. Mr. Hutchinson's partner and the mother of his child, Lola Marshall Williams, was a director in the company up to Tuesday when she stepped aside in the wake of the controversy. Anti-corruption watchdog National Integrity Action has written to the Integrity Commission requesting an investigation into the Holland Estate land deal. Several persons were arrested on Wednesday by the Clarendon Police during an operation in the Tollgate and Osborne Store communities. Two men are to be charged for illegal possession of firearm and ammunition, while the others are facing drug-related charges. More in the support from Dwayne Anderson. The latest statistics revealed by the Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF indicate that Clarendon had recorded 54 murders as of July 13, 20 fewer than the same period in 2019. Between June and July, residents of Clarendon also enjoyed a three-week period without a single murder. I really don't want to get into the statistics, but yes, we have significant um, reduction in murders so far and that's how we want it to be we will continue to press on for the rest of the year clarendon also ranked in the top five for most illegal weapons recovered so far in 2020 and on wednesday they took another illegal weapon off the streets one man tried to elude the roadblock operation but based on how we were organized we were able to stop that vehicle and recovered a Taurus 9mm pistol with 11 rounds. Two men were taken into custody and so far we have also arrested two persons for possession and dealing in marijuana. These roadblock operations as the police call them are supported by technology and sniffer dogs. On Wednesday, the dogs helped the police identify what could be a tactic by criminals. That's the trend we identified today, that several females were taken in for um, carrying marijuana and other items. I, I, I'm not sure why we're having that situation, but that's what it is. The police leadership say law-abiding residents in Clarendon have been impressed by the gains made by the security forces in the parish and have been letting the men and women of the force know. Head of operations for the Clarendon Police, Superintendent Christopher Phillips, says the positive feedback has lifted the morale of the security teams in Clarendon and is part of the reason for the successes. Dwayne Anderson, TVJ News. And we now take a break on the midday news, but we'll be right back. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Continuing the news now. The severe drought now affecting the island is wreaking havoc on farmers of the Islington district in Portland. They're seeking the government's assistance in combating the effects of the dry spell. The details in this report. Farmers of Islington district in Portland are battling the prolonged drought that has ravaged their crops, leaving them with millions of dollars in losses. Islington is a farming district that depends heavily on a single stream for water. But the stream is now dry and the farmers say water is not trucked to the community regularly. A little spring up top, right, um, it's now dry. Yesterday it was dry, there was no water at all in it. And that spring primarily served the top of the district. We now have portable water. Them come sometimes and them throw little water in a one tank. And for sometimes months, none of them, you know, see none come, you understand? And sometimes them go some places and them don't go some places because they always left some down the bottom and, and nobody up the top and the middle get none. 
The farmers complain that their livelihoods have been severely impacted by the dry spell as the region is no longer getting the frequent rainfall it used to. Things then dry up. Plant, pop chow, callaloo, and skellion and thyme and so. And everything dry up. Yellow yam, plant a 200 weight of yellow yam, everything dry up. We have a situation now with, with people who raise cow and they can't find water for them. They, they, they just have to thinking about selling. My, my primary crop is pineapple and we just walk the field and you can see the effects of the dry season, especially the leaves and the, the um, poor development of some of the fruits. Right? Um, you see big pineapple, but you also see some very small ones. It's why they are seeking assistance from the government. Right. So if, if there's some kind of relief that farmers who we can identify like Mr. Worth, right, and people like um, Reds and Lucky here from this district who have lost a lot on farming, right, because of the dry season, I think that some kind of subsidy, right, to help them to get back on the ground. If we get, um, get like one of the money where them you say one of the birthday party a, a, a CMU, it can change everybody life here. It, you know, that could do a lot for us here. Prince Moore, TVJ News. Jamaica is on track to open its first national shelter for victims of domestic abuse in August. Gender Minister Olivia Grange says work has resumed on two of the three shelters that the government is planning to open across the island. She was making her contribution to the sectoral debate in Parliament this week. The work from home orders had stopped our work to renovate and retrofit buildings to be used as shelters for victims of domestic abuse. Well, today I'm happy to say that work has resumed, Mr. Speaker, and we are on schedule to open one of the shelters in August this year. She added that the ministry has taken possession of a second property and the title for the third is now being transferred. Domestic abuse has increased across the world during the COVID-19 lockdown. The stay-at-home measures that countries have had to implement have the unfortunate side effect of having women and our children locked up with their abusers, sometimes without access to family or friends, or an opportunity to call for help. Mr. Speaker, we got the calls. We got the calls, but we were able to respond to all calls for help that we received and we continue to build our capacity to respond. The Donington Primary School in St. Mary now has internet connection. With the COVID-19 pandemic and the academic school year set to start on September 7, the school's principal Lennox Gardner says the move comes at the right time. The socio-economic background of our students, um, many students cannot afford to go on the internet. The cost for internet connection is, is expensive for our students. So many students, they, they do it out. They depend on the library. They go to the ca internet cafe, which is about five miles away. So they, that's an additional cost. So um, this installation will actually help our students. It is going to make a big difference especially for my children because my children go to the school I work all the way in Kingston and most of the time I have to stay in Kingston and I have to complete their research I have to do their assignment and travel from Kingston to St. Mary just to get their assignment done so I think this is going to be a big change for them. Member of Parliament for St. Mary Western Robert Montague says the project will be extended to other schools and the wider communities. The other schools in the area, um, Derry, Freehill, Ramble, Mount Angus, uh, will also be getting internet service through this collaboration with the ministry. The 
cost is approximately two thousand US dollars for the hardware, and then there's a three hundred and fifty US dollars per month fee to bring access. And then this is the start, and then communities can therefore access the facilities in the future because you can always run a cable from this point out into the community and persons can then establish their own accounts. At the time now for sports, another defiant half century from opener Dominic Sibley has left honours even in the final session on day one of the second test between West Indies and England at Old Trafford in Manchester. At sports time, England are 153 for three. Sibley, with his second successive 50, has so far scored a 63, while Ben Stokes is on 38. Now Rory Burns, 15, Zach Crowley, not, and Joe Root, 23, are the wickets to go. Ruston Chase has so far taken two wickets, with Alzari Joseph getting one. The Caribbean side has gone with an unchanged squad from their four-wicket win in the opening test in Southampton. The playing 11 reads Craig Brathway to John Campbell, Shamar Brooks, Shai Hope, Ruston Chase, Jermaine Blackwood, Shane Dowich, Jason Holder, Alzari Joseph, Kemar Roach and Shannon Gabriel. And that's the Midday News. I'm Vashon Brown. Join us at 7 for a primetime news package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a wonderful afternoon.